start with us. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, today we're talking about Lean Agile Project Management. I am Joshua Kolaoli, and I'm passionate about Lean Agile transformational uh, leadership. And uh, very soon you would understand why I'm that passionate about Lean Agile and passionate about transformation. I have seen a system that have wasted resources. I have not seen any project that has access to unlimited resources. Neither have I seen any human who has access to unlimited resources. We all have access to limited resources in one way or the other. And when I talk about resources, I'm actually even emphasizing resource like time, uh, like talent, uh, like uh, funds, that's funding. And this is one of the things that makes you uh, get weakened uh, as a leader, because one of your key responsibility is to manage these limited resources and achieve great results. So we would always, either personally at organizational level or at different strata in our lives, uh, uh, as we face different challenges, as we navigate through uh, this uncertain reality, uh, we would continue to uh, we would continue to face the challenge of having to navigate through this, uh, these different times. So I want to urge us, I want to urge us to see what I'm talking about this way. The goal of this discussion is more beyond the technicalities of Lean Agile to primarily on the technicality the, the primary technicality is about changing the way we think, changing the way we see, changing the way we hear, and changing the way we understand things, comprehend things, and most importantly, changing the way we respond to life. I would urge you, please, if our background is a bit uh, noisy, we can actually be on mute. Uh, there will be a time for question and answer, so please, um, uh, that would be appreciated. So. Uh, a little about what I'm trying to talk about today. You see, I want us to know that leaders must commit to ensuring that their teams are on disciplined execution reading. Through good and bad times, in life, it's been noted that you would always have the ups and downs of life. Uh, life, is, life is bounded by different forms of ups and downs. There are, in terms of money, there are times where nations themselves are at the peak of their wealth peak of power, either military power or economic power. And there are times when such nations may also come to the average or come to their trough. It is normal uh, this way for things to happen. However, the most important thing that we need to know is that the way the world works is currently broken. I didn't say that. It was Jeff Sutherland, one of the co-creators of Scrum. That actually emphasized that. If you look at the world, one of the most respected organizations in the world is the FBI, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. Okay. Uh, can we be on mute, please? Thank you. So, the FBI, uh, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. When I said the way the world works is broken, you won't understand until you see figures that are being wasted in the bid of trying to develop solutions. I mean solutions that could be life-changing, solutions that could alter the reality of men, solutions that could prevent a significant event like 9-11, solutions that could prevent, uh, I don't know if you've heard about Hiroshima Nagasaki disaster, uh, Several other nuclear disasters um, in, in, that has happened in, in, in Ukraine, in cities in Ukraine. Uh, several other disasters like that could be prevented when such solutions are parted. Uh, leveraging on the capacity of computer systems to integrate and to get uh, data analyzed and then make it clear to us that things are being planned that could be major evil. Or in a generation where we are so hyper-connected, so 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 flattened that I can ideate in, in, in America and I can get it printed in, in China and I can come and mass 
mass, I can sell it massively anywhere in the world, online. I don't even have to be there. I don't have to market it uh, physically, like just having to travel around. All I need to do is just to understand uh, what the dynamics is, is online, on social media, let's say Facebook, Twitter, or I leverage on Amazon or Google, and, and, and I'm able to market things. So in this kind of world, you would understand that you need to learn the hack of doing twice the work in half the time. That was the business case that Jeff Sutherland, one of the co-creators of Scrum. I've actually been with him on a meeting before, and one of the primary, key, uh, fact, primary factors that I kept emphasizing on is leaders, leadership, leadership, leadership. So today, I want to take you through a very short uh, meeting uh, where we would be able to talk about the way the world works. And let me go a bit backwards. I said the whole burden is on the leaders because the leadership was always coming to ensuring that teams are on disciplined execution reading. Systems and structures are solidified where leaders do not let down their guards even in good seasons. I, I need us to understand this. One of the crucial questions someone might ask is that, what gives you the credibility to be able to take us through this short course? Well, I think I've earned some job experiences. I've also earned some credentials to be able to do this class. Um, it's not normal in academic setting for you to at least talk a little bit about your profile to make people understand why you think you can't talk about lean and especially lean agile uh, form of transformation. Um, just to say a little bit of my work experience, I've been in project management all my life. That's the simple way for me to summarize it. But I've been actively making things happen within a system. I would say that is beyond 20 years. Uh, I've actually worked with systems, built systems, coordinated systems. I've worked in administration for at least more than 20 years. Even while I was in medical school, I was also running another, um, we call it an A-level educational center, but I see them as projects. Year in, year out, you get a bunch of them, you have to take them through a process of transformation, academic transformation, get them to write exams and get them to succeed. That's simply what a project looks like, year in, year out. So aside from that, I, I have a master's in business administration. I also have a uh, master's of applied science in patient safety and healthcare quality. Uh, majorly that uh, focused also on managing projects in large scale health, health, healthcare system. I'm a certified professional in healthcare quality, a fellow of International Society for um, Quality in Healthcare. And I heard that as the first Nigerian fellow actually in, in the year 2014. And I'm also a certified uh, project management professional, Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt. And then I'm a certified Scrum Master and Product Owner. So I think I've earned some work experience leading large scale projects uh, like um, uh, digital transformations of conversational AI platforms and, and so on. So let's go ahead uh, with this class. Uh, having, having talked about Lean and Agile, you would see, uh, even from the book I wrote that I'm passionate about Lean Agile, one of the chapters in my book is Lean Agile Thinking. And please, I would love you to just go along with me today because what I want you to learn more is from maybe the little story or experiences I will share, not more of the basic facts that you can read from textbooks yourself. When we say lean, the focus is on eliminating waste and maximizing value through continuous improvement. And when we're thinking about agile, agile means you're embracing an iterative development. Iterations, small bits. Adapting to change and then delivering value early and often. If you combine these two major revolutionary ideas together, which are actually integrated ideas, uh, one of a kind together, you would get the best of both worlds in, in project execution. And one of the crucial things that this Lean Agile is against, and please, if you're going to take something away from today's class or this session, one thing that you must start avoiding actively from this moment onward is this evil concept called it is so evil that we do not pay attention to it. It is so evil 
that we do not pay attention to it. The waste of your time, the waste of your talent, the waste of your financial resources, the waste of your willpower. Those four critical things are what will distinguish you, that are what transforms system. If you can deal with waste in any of your system, I can promise you it's only a matter of time to will transform that system. I've studied hundreds of systems. I've read about them, I've worked in many, and I can promise you if you can work on reducing wasting of your time, wasting of talent, that is where you have access to talent, intellectual minds, brilliant, bright minds who can integrate and collaboratively work together. If you can manage them effectively and efficiently, reducing waste, if you can manage funds effectively, and most importantly, if you can manage the willpower of people, the willpower of people is the capacity for you to connect with them. Three things are important to get to the willpower of people. You must get to align their personal motivation. You must also integrate social interactions around them that will help them. And most importantly, you must build structural motivation around people. So what I'm saying is, if you have an organization now, one crucial thing is you must create a vision statement. There must be a statement of purpose. You must find a way to wrap it around the soul and the heart of the people for them to buy the idea. Otherwise, you will not be able to sync with the willpower. It must align with what I believe in too. I must also believe in those value systems. I must be motivated because it is caught in a vicar world. And when I say vicar, I'm talking about a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. For me to just wake up in the morning and love to go to work. But the ideals and ideas of the workplace must be connected to my own personal motivation. It must also create a social motivation in that work environment where at, at a social or societal value level, people's willpower would align with what um, what the vision of the, the workplace is, and of course, structural motivation by creating other uh, systems of performance improvement. I don't want to uh, take too much of our time on this, but the most important idea you must take away from this class, just like I said, is that changing the way you think, changing the way you see, changing the way you learn, changing the way you understand, changing the way you hear things, and then most importantly, changing the way you respond to things. Because ultimately, when you now have thought about it, you've learned about it, you've integrated yourself with deep quality thinking folks, and you, you have, you're collaborating with people, the most important thing is for you to make transforming choices. And if you're not lean and agile in your approach, and that's why when you have a big project, you're not thinking about the bigness of the, the starting of the project at its big level. You're thinking about it on how to start it in chunks. We all started in uh, life iteratively. We're given back to, in fact, let me even backtrack into the pre existence world. We started as a single, uh, two cells coming together, integrating to conform one, which continued to multiply until we became multi billion cells as we are. So, uh, if human system can explain this to us, then it means whatever project you want to embark on, you will have to start small. I just reiterated the whole idea of waste. The most dangerous kind of waste is not the waste you do not recognize. So one of your crucial roles as a lean adult thinker is to make sure you recognize every form of waste in your life as a person and in your organization. So you're always thinking, scanning through your environment, scanning through your processes, and thinking about the form of waste that is in that environment. You see, time waste differs from material waste. This is their report talking. The easiest of all waste and the hardest to correct is the waste of time. And is, is actually also the most painful because at the end of people's life, the first question when people, you know, as a physician, when you tell someone you have a few days to go, the first thing that reflects in their mind is what are the things I've done? But were they fulfilling? So you now start reevaluating your time. I listened to uh, one of the presentations of Steve Jobs uh, a couple of days ago, and, and I think he was addressing a set of uh, university students in their commencement, and he explained that he lived his life as if he were to die tomorrow. The metaphoric idea of living life with that ideal, it was one of the guiding factors that kept him on his toes to achieve 
great amount of results in less time. And if we would embrace such things like that, uh, it, it will go a long way to help us. I would not uh, want to waste our time. The world has always worked in a waterfall model. The world has always worked in a model where if you finish one step, then you start the next step. But we have also all discovered that that model cannot cope with the current realities of our time. And we are about to develop iterative development in short sprint where we become very agile. So I'm telling you in my little exposition that the world would only either work as a waterfall, the full bloom, or as an agile. We have tried to create so many hybrids between the two, which is working fantastically well. Like I said, I would be sharing more of experiential ideas. So uh, you might not see me reading directly from the slide, but you can always read the difference between agile project management methodology and waterfall. Waterfall is the traditional model, that's the old model. And agile is the in thing, the, the lean agile methodology is what has helped the software development system to be quite successful. When GT Bank uh, upgraded their apps not too long ago, a lot of us were victim of a lot of dispense error, uh, maybe a, a lack of atomicity of what the application was supposed to do. Atomicity means if you say, tell it to send money, it should send your money. If it is not going to be able to do it, it must return your money back to you. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of mishaps happened. They had to debug the process. It took a while. Before, if, if such thing had happened, I was going to be very annoyed. But now, with my understanding of what happens from the back end, and how developers get to work day and night to make things happen, and now I have to track issues myself, track post-production validation issues, and, and I'm talking about post-deployment of your code, don't forget, this code would have been uniquely tested individually. Upon integration of the code, they've been tested at integration level. Even after that, functional performance regression testing have been done on this code. A QA tester would have written down so many test scenarios and would have tested and made sure this would happen in different environments, from dev environment to QA environment to user acceptance testing environment, and even at that, upon deployment of the code into production environment, you will see it as a, as a customer in the production environment. Upon deployment of the code, even into production environment, you will still be surprised that you still have bugs, you still have defects. And so if, if, if the IT world did not move into Agile, if they have to wait on the waterfall process, more time would have been wasted. And that is exactly what happened to FBI. And let me backstep a little bit so that you would understand. This was exactly what happened to FBI. Why Jeff was able to advise them that the way you're working is broken. And it's not specific to FBI. I only picked the FBI exam because that will resonate more with us because it's one of the most successful organizations in the world in terms of security. That's why they have their flaws too. But look at the budget in a certain time. Uh, this budget is, is far greater than the budget of some, some nations of the world I know, uh, maybe many nations uh, of the world. So if, if you look at that, if that amount can be wasted on a project, if that amount can be wasted and they're asking for more budget of this same amount, you will wonder that so technology at some point could actually, uh, could actually have failed human. So... John P. Cotter spoke about the fact that the rate at which the world is changing, the whole structures and portals that were built will never be able to go. I've mentioned about the fact that we're in VUCA times. It's, it's, a, it's a time that is so volatile, things can abruptly change completely by tomorrow. We have climate change that is ravaging the world. Uh, we have a lot of digital transformative effort that is going on. We have nuclear disasters. The world is back at war with themselves. Uh, there's tension in some regions of the world as we speak, and some other regions that even look like the world of orderliness have their own challenges. There's the gun challenges in the United States. There's the healthcare challenges in the United Kingdom. Uh, there is the basic, uh, maybe, resource and the love of humanity challenge uh, in, in Africa. Uh, Asia has seen its own challenges and is still also seeing some, so, some nations of the world that you think are doing well are actually not free. Taiwan is not free. Hong Kong is not free. They have been oppressed by their bigger brother, China. So you would see that everywhere you go in the world, there are challenges. Cyclone does ravage one of the major several cities in, 
in India not too long ago, Morocco woke up to, I think it was an earthquake, Turkey woke up to an earthquake. The world is so volatile, so uncertain, so complex to deal with. So that puts pressure on you as a person, wherever you are, to understand that we need more responsive leaders. And we need to make sure we close the knowledge gap in everything we're doing. Project failure rates can be as high as 95% if not well managed. And then the changes in organizational culture, because of the changes in human nature and our responsiveness to life has actually uh, affected a whole lot of things. If you talk about a lean agile management team, let me come closer home now when we're talking about software development majorly. And you will be thinking about the leader of the team. Well, and I use the word leader carefully because leader does not mean you're the commander in chief. Leader simply means you're the servant of the team. You're a servant who truly cares about the ultimate outcome of what the team seeks to achieve. So, and I'm talking about a product owner who has a better understanding of what the product behavior should be at the end of the day. So, I want to have a, 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 an upgraded application that can move money from one end, of one account to another. Uh, there will be the movement between my primary account to another account domicile with my same bank. It could also be transferring money to, and I'm using money because I know that would resonate well. Uh, most of us would have had transactional issues before at one point, so it, it will resonate well. I could also use healthcare applications. I could use educational applications. I could use other forms of applications, but just uh, stay with me. So you have a product owner who understands the whole idea of the product, who is also interacting between the business and the product development team. And uh, of course, you know the development team are the guys who's going to write the code, the guy who's going to develop the front end of the application. That's what you see and what you interact with. So the guy must think about aesthetics. The guy must think about the excellence of if I position this here and at this size, if this guy clicks this, is it going to link directly to the next page? That's the headache of the UI UX folks. And um, for the developer, his own, his own essence is functionality, functionality, and then to ensure that the function keeps going, even if it's, a, if it's a thousand clicks. So you, and you also have the agile delivery manager in major and massive projects where you have to integrate a lot of platforms together to be able to run something like, let's say a statewide health insurance project, a national health insurance project, uh, let's say a banking application that's going to be deployed live. And that if the banking application fails, uh, you can imagine the debt a bank can go into if a wrong transaction gets to happen and it's not spotted and adjusted uh, immediately. So, we, we, of course, the advantage we have with uh, digital transformation is that such transaction lines can actually be traced uh, if it's not uh, if it's if, if if it's properly uh, built. So, thinking about this system, and this is just from the back end of what makes things happen. Basically, one of the models of one of the methodology or the frameworks of Agile is Scrum. And Scrum has a definition for these uh, different roles. Uh, if we get there, I would uh, talk a little about it. But like I said, the, my goal today is about the thinking. I, my, my, I want to stretch our thinking. I want us to stretch our thinking together. And as I'm talking, I want you to start reflecting on all your experiences with so many softwares you're using, so many applications you're using. So think through things that way because it's going to help you understand this concept better. I could have said think through the project of how you went to school. That's another project on its own. How you graduate with your degree can be a project. In your school, don't forget, you have to do continuous learning. In your school, you have to do continuous collaboration with either your lecturer, your friends, uh, maybe a graduate assistant, several other people. So if you're going to succeed in life, your goal must be about continuous learning, continuous collaboration, continuous improvement, and responding to change. It's as simple as that. You must respond appropriately to change. That is the agile thinking. So either it's the project of my school or the project of I want to take on a PhD. I want to take on, I want to build another new system that will selling products to people. One thing you must understand is continuous learning. You must continuously read about your environment. That's a business environment. You must continuously read about digital transformation platform. That's technological platform that can make things happen differently for you. You must continually read about processes, how you are running your processes, 
And you must continuously learn about people. Learning about people would make you a transformational leader, which would also help you to be able to build an excellent process, leverage digital transformation platforms, and then also understand your business environment and then ultimately succeed. But don't forget, learning about people would also help you to collaborate properly, continuous improvement, and then a change response. I want to mix the two together. So look at, look at it this way. What is the essence of all this learning, collaboration, improvement, and responding to change? No, no, the primary thing is to produce value. As a person, the reason why you're going to school is to become more valuable. As a doctor, the reason why I train myself to become better in project management is to be of value to whatever system I, 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 I get into. So that means ultimately the guy who is going to employ you is employing value, not your name. If he finds value in another person, he will drop you and employ the other person. So in all your thinking, what you should be processing is how do I become valuable? And you see, a lot of systems have undergone so many things. Motorola, Toyota, these guys have had to reinvent themselves under difficult, uh, maybe economic depressive modes. And they are about to come up with what we call value stream mapping for end-to-end -end analysis of what value you can bring on board. Let me give you a very funny example. In 2014 to 2015, when we're planning for election year, and you know, the, the whole rumor is about Nigeria will be thrown into war, we will divide, and all those things would happen. And the first thing that came to my mind is, have you done a value stream map of your life? And I did it and I analyzed that, okay, if push comes to shove, one, I'm a physician. I can take care of patients anywhere in the world. So if, if, if I find myself anywhere, I can survive on skills of medical skills. That's one value that I can bring on board on my own map. Another thing is, if I find myself anywhere, I can still teach biosciences. I can still teach physics, chemistry, biology, and maths. That's two. I, I, I separated that. Number three is I have a little good knowledge of agricultural system. I can farm. I can organize things to make farm plantations happen and the short feeding is taken, uh, taken care of. So I, I start looking at my life at a systemic level. So what I'm saying is you will not do exceptionally well in learning if you don't have a clear value stream map of your life. What are the key valuable areas, the key core skills you have that, can, that you can now work upon to out, outshine or out, that you can outwork others and become excellent at. Now, I'm, I'm coming back to uh, project uh, analysis now. Continuous flow means, of course, you must, you must prevent any form of kinks or any defect bugs that will prevent flow, uh, that will prevent uh, smooth flow. Your whole idea must be, instead of trying to push things, it must be to pull things. Imagine an idea, I need to get a phone. It's iPhone, let's say 15 uh, Pro Max or something. All I need to do is, the warehouse does not need to stock all the iPhones. All they need to do is create a platform where people will place an order. Once they see the order trend, they can then manufacture based on the trend. Not that they will over-manufacture and undersell in the long run. That's just what full strategy is talking about. And then perfection through Kaizen spirit. I'm sure you understand that continuously improving. Basically, the benefit of lean agile thinking or project management methodology is to increase customer satisfaction, which is crucial. Faster time to market. I'm just trying to balance the two. These are stuff you can read online yourself. Improve project predictability for successes and for failure, as the case may be. Some projects are bound to fail. Don't feel bad. It doesn't mean ultimately you have not done the best of work. It just means you have eat on certain times. So some projects will fail. Some will fail based on resources. Some will fail based on technical know-how. Some will fail just because they have to fail. And there would be a learning call for most of us to, to, to pick up later. I've been part of projects that have failed before. So don't feel bad if you hear that project fail and you think I'm an exceptional manager, projects shouldn't fail. Some projects will fail, just like the concept of Kobayashi Maru. And um, reduce cost and waste. But one of the difference between a lean agile person is if your project fails, let me just reiterate that, you will make it a learning call and you make a big deal out of the knowledge you, you draw from it so that subsequent projects will not fail. That is the whole idea. That's the difference between a lean agile thinker with a growth mindset. And then of course, lean agile enhances team performance and ultimately 
uh, drives this thing. There are four other manifestos that I just think we need to share with ourselves. You see, in the before traditionally, the world is more focused on processes and tools. They are focused on oh, we must do documentation, we must write project plan, which is exceptional. They still work. We must do contract negotiation. We must follow a plan strictly. I used to have friends who love following plan. They will tell you what's the plan, what's the plan, what's the plan. But most important thing that I found over time is that if you have fixed mindset on a plan, you will breeze your emotions very soon. And once you breeze your emotion, your willpower will drop and your commitment to the project, your collaborative capacity will also drop. So in our lives, do I say you should not have plan? Please do, because plan is exceptional. But make sure your plan is responding to change. Do I say you don't go and negotiate contract? Yes, you have to, but don't forget your most important trait is the ability to, to collaborate with customer. So the idea is not to abandon contract negotiation. The idea is to learn how to make your customer so happy and collaborate with the person that the person will never be able to let you go. If I'm a doctor taking care of patient, I must collaborate with the patient to the point that even if I'm not able to treat the patient's disease, I must treat the patient. As a teacher, even if I'm not able to remove the inability to learn from the student, I must train the student. I hope you're getting me. The focus is not on the disease. It's not on the failure of the student. The focus is on the person, customer collaboration, not on the fact that the patient must get well. You must take care of the patient that even if the patient eventually dies, the patient will say, I was taken care of, I'm happy dying. That is the difference. So even if people come to study from you as, a, as an educational institution, even if they don't eventually pass the exam ultimately, you must take care of them that everywhere they go to, they will say, no, we were well taught. They took care of us. They went above and beyond. Unfortunately, we failed though, but that is the difference between the two mindsets. Working software, it must be a working system or software. Anytime you see a brand new car, the, the goal of the car manufacturer is to make sure the car works as the, uh, uh, according to promise. So it could be software, it could be a product that, that you're delivering, but the goal is for it to work. So like I said, I'm trying to also to make us see differently today. So you're seeing differently because whatever role you will be taking up in, in agile project management in the future, if you're passionate about it, or if you're just passionate about learning lean adult thinking just for your own personal life to change the way you see things, trust me, you would need to make your focus shift uh, from the old or the traditional way to how things happen. Then individuals and interaction, discussions and discussions amongst individuals is crucial. Then uh, in 2000, and, uh, a couple of years ago, like over a, more than one or two decades ago, uh, uh, folks, a couple of folks that have been into uh, project agile project management have come together and they have discussed the, the four values I've spoken about and this 12 manifesto. But I'll just run through it so that because of our time, uh, the, the first thing about the, the agile idea is you must satisfy your customer. You must be ready to satisfy them by welcoming changing requirements, even if it's late in development. Sometimes they're almost at the end of a project and the customer will discover something, a kind of report that they need, that they want it to be displayed, or maybe it's a regulatory report that has just been introduced by government policy, and you're almost done with developing. You have to factor a way in which that report will be generated, either pulled from your database, or if you have a downstream data lake where the report will be pulled, you have to, you have to create ways by which the report will be gotten. You must deliver working software frequently if you want to remain relevant. And just the same, this means also that even you, and that's why you see Toyota, you wonder what's the difference between Camry 2014 and 2015? What's the difference between Camry 2022, 2023, and 2024? You probably practically may not be able to see one tangible difference if you sit down aggressively with it. But one thing you must understand is that if you want to be successful, you must keep delivering continuously, frequently. There must be a regular cadence to how you do things. So don't forget that if you're reading, study at the, on the cadence. If you're studying or trying to develop an idea, make sure you're developing the set of idea on the cadence. Anything that brings a gap will lead you to a waste. Business people and developers must always work together. You must build projects around motivated individuals. Please stay motivated. It's crucial. I spoke about personal motivation, social and structural motivation earlier. Stay motivated. As an individual, if there's one crucial thing, you must keep believing in the reality of what you're doing. 
Face to face conversation is better than talking on Zoom. It's as simple as that. Now I can't see your expression. I can't understand. I, I don't even know if you're getting me. But I have to just believe that you're 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 listening. And that's why face to face conversation is, is always better. So if we can schedule meetings where people can gather together in the same room, it's always better than talking from online. But if online is the next available thing, because we have different diverse things located in different places, we have co-located things that can be together, but we also have dispersed things that can be in different countries developing a solution at the same time. So how do we do this? So working software is our primary measure of progress in Agile. Agile processes promote sustainable development, then don't forget technical excellence and good design. Apple will continue to lead the world if they continue to work on their calligraphic skills to beat Windows continuously. And that is one of the crucial value or user experience that Apple is bringing on board. Microsoft has to go copy a couple of times or many a time. And you would see that even from the manufacturing of the first Mac, operating system, there has been attention to excellence of design. So in all our environment, in anything you do, pay attention to the aesthetics, the brilliance, the elegance, the brightness of the environment. Ensure your lighting is excellent and exceptional. Don't forget, simplicity is the art of maximizing the amount of work. And the simplicity is crucial. And that's the definition of simplicity. You can uh, read more about that then you must work with a self-organizing team, teams that can self-motivate, self-drive themselves. They are cross-functional in their approach and they can organize themselves continuously. And then the twelfth one is team reflect on how to become more effective through what we call retrospective. This is elimination of waste. I told you the major problem why lean agile is needed in our life is waste. We talk about GPEG, overproduction, waiting time in hospitals, Waiting time in educational institutions, waiting time with our subscribe, waiting time with so, so, so many things, waiting time all across the world, everywhere you go, you're on key, right? That's waste there. And that's why if you're going anywhere, take a book along. If they ask you to be on queue, open the book and start reading. So that the time you're wasting there, you're actually reading something. Of course, you're listening to a video that will help you increase your learning. Waiting time, not utilized talent. Some of us are in systems where we're not fully utilized. That's waste. That's waste. Transportation excess. If you have to tell somebody you have to move the product to this place before you can get to this place, that's waste. Inventory excess. Keeping too many products and materials that are not being processed. I mean materials that are in continuous processing and you're stocking it at the level, not allowing it to move. So flow has been blocked in that case. Motion excess. You see, you see, we design systems, hospital system, facilities, where the process is not in a simple sequence for people to understand how to move from a region to another region to get. Example, you have to go and pay in the pharmacy. The pharmacy will be to the east. You have to go and pay in the theater after moving from the pharmacy. The theater will be to the west. So the person would have to walk from the middle, where maybe the reception is to the east, to make first payment for medication, go travel to the West, those are waste. Then extra processing, every extra activity that you have to. You can read about these forms of waste. There's an acronym for it. Well, let me say two of them. There's the downtime or the Tim Woods. Well, I think I use the downtime here. So just use the acronym to memorize this if you really want to like uh, invite the stop. But one of the guiding principles of Lean, as I'm trying to move quickly towards wrapping up this, so that I can open up to questions. The, the goal is to amplify learning, ensure that you decide as late as possible. Sometimes you have to deliver fast, don't get me wrong, but you must learn to stall decisions if you need some necessary information. So the fact that we say agile does not mean you should quickly be making wrong decisions. A lot of times, you must be able to differentiate between what is urgent and what is important. Because sometimes people run into the house and they create a scenario of urgency. But if you really sit them down and ask questions, that was not the important thing for your life. So, but pay attention to whatever can take your life immediately is urgent. Just know that. Empower the team. Building quality in all your processes, optimize the whole true systems thinking. These are the seven guiding principles of our lean methodology. Scrum, uh, you can read about Scrum online. 
but I want us to get to, yeah, I want, this is where I want us to get to so that you can understand the whole essence of my story from the beginning. And please stay with me. You have a team, you have a product owner, project manager, business analyst, and you have the stakeholders, the guys who, the chief transformation officers, who wants to see transformation happen. But the first thing is, there must be a problem. Are you surprised? So I love problems. And you must love problems. If you want to be a Nina Jalakonga, you must love challenges. Maybe I should put it in a more professional way. You must love challenges because these are what sports analysis. When we face challenges, we, we get into what we call the root cause analysis mode. So your eye must constantly be scanning for problems, looking for problems. What are the things that are limiting me? If you want to be great in life, you must see problem and you must solve problem. Very simple. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know the popular example of David and Goliath. David saw a problem that his nation had and he was able to solve it and he became a famous man. It's that simple. So you see a problem in your environment that a software solution can solve, you start analysis, analyzing the problem, analyzing the people part of the problem, the process part of the problem, the technological, current technological limitation of the problem, and the business environment part of the problem. That's the politics. Um, we, we call something the personal analysis. Is it driven by politics? Is it driven by environmental factor? Is it driven by social issues? Is it driven by some technological limitation? Are there legal limitations? Are there economic limitations? And are there religious limitations to the first law? If, if you do all these analysis, then you have to work with a system architect. So now think through how do we design a solution, intervention. So after you see a problem, the first thing that must come to your mind is a deep analysis. From the deep analysis, what should come to your mind is, is the design, design factor. How do you design exceptionally well, both for the experience of the user and from the back-end functionality of how that experience will be created? A, an architect must sit down to be able to do that design. This is the goal of my discussion, please. And so it permits me if I spend a, a couple of minutes on this. And I need you to, to imbibe this, not because it's a software development life cycle sequence, but because it is the way you should even view your life as a person. And such that when you see yourself run into a challenge, what should come to your mind is what are the deep, how did I get here? Analyze. And you are not going to do a great job if you are not ready to ask something similar or the five why questions. How did I get here? Why am I here? So there's this popular story of a building. As the story said in New York, but it could be anywhere. And that what they notice is that Bird chippings, that's the fecal pathway excreter of birds, used to come on that building. And so one of the first ideas someone says, let's kill all the birds. And someone says, can you ask the question, why are the bird chippings on the building? And so they discover that the bird chippings come on the building at about 7 p.m. So that means the birds are probably going, coming there to rest uh, in the evenings. Okay, so what can we do? Why do they come there to rest in the evening? Someone said, okay, they started searching, they started searching. They discovered that, okay, they come there to rest in the evening because the lightning goes dark at that time, but the light on the building comes up at that time. So they come there to stay. Okay, so what can we do to solve this problem? The first thing that will come to your mind is just spray a chemical there, let the birds die, right? The other guy said, Okay, we've been spending so much money having to clean the walls, repaint year on year, and all those things. The simple solution an architect just prescribed for them after analyzing the whole scenario was just change the position of this your light source. Instead of it facing on the building and the bed sees it as a ray of light for them to come, change the angulation of the light to another direction. And hence, the bed will not come there again. In another model of the story, they say at night when the light comes on the building, the birds come there to pick up insects. 
Because they come there to pick up insects, while they are picking up the insects, they release their chippings on the on the on, on, on the building. Some people say just kill the insect, the birds will not come in here. Someone says just change the direction of the light. The insect will not come there and the birds will not come there. And hence the building will not become dirty. And hence we won't spend money to repaint or to clean. So a lot of time when you sit down and you design better, you, you analyze better, you will design better. You will design a better solution. Just changing the angulation of light instead of just spraying chemical to kill birds. If you spray chemical to kill birds, some humans too will inhale the chemical. They may not die immediately, but if you're a system thinker and you understand that things happen over a progression of time, they will die over time. So when you're designing solution, you design solution as a person thinking in systems. So after the design, then if it's going to be a software, then you will need a developer. If it's a product like manufacturing a brand new phone, brand new car, brand new laptop, brand new machine, a light off, an electric bulb, uh, an X-ray machine, a mammogram, or a CT scan, or an MRI machine, then you will need the guys who will work on the development of different materials of the product. But to make it simple, I'll talk about the front-end development uh, and then the back-end development part of the whole thing. So the back-end folks are the guys who possibly write the code or work with the non-coding platform uh, at the back-end, and that back-end is integrated with a data source so that it can present information to you at the front end. So what you're seeing on your screen now can be assumed to be your front end experience. But so many work had gone on the back end to give us this front end experience. That's the simple idea I can bring about. It. So someone designed this interface. Someone thought graphically, this is how sweet it will be. Let me make the color change in this progression so that the eyes will love it. And they've done a lot of testing to understand how human things, how the emotions of human connect to those things. They've created a lot of persona. They, they, they have imagined you as a doctor, how you want to hold the probe of your ultrasound machine, or the probe of your, or, or, or maybe the probe, or, or maybe your CT scan gantry, how you want it to be flapping, and how the patient experience will be on it. They imagine all those things, and that is what goes into development. But don't forget, even the fact that you have excellent development does not mean you should not test. So what we try to do is, while in development, we do what we call unit testing. While in development, we do some lot of functional testing. In fact, while in development and going into testing, we do what we call a, regret, a performance testing to ensure that it's delivering according to purpose. We do a lot of testing, and then we plan for our deployment. While you're planning for your deployment, you will start engaging business. Business ultimately will determine if you're successful or not. Don't forget, business ultimately will determine if you're successful or not. Let me use this image to show you in a clear time how Scrum has made that very easy. Scrum, by the way, is a lightweight framework that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems. Uh, should you want to just learn that, We've gathered requirements. We know what our features must look like. We put them in our product backlog, and the Scrum team starts working on it at development. But as they're working on it, the team itself is both improving itself with a sprint retrospective, but it's also coming to us with different layers of product uh, develop, uh, deploy, deployment. Don't forget that the team designs, the team builds, the team tries to integrate and test within this sprint cycle. Um, of course, if you're going to learn about Scrum, this is just the taste of the whole idea. So you can't expect me to teach this in less than an hour or so. If, if you're going to learn about Scrum, it's something we would do diligently over with. So if you're passionate about it, you can reach out to the admin. Uh, you can drop your email address, drop your phone number. We can reach out to you, but it's something you would love because beyond software development, it's going to transform your life, even the way you approach things, the way you see things. So. Even beyond the job opportunities that are available, and that anywhere in the world where you find yourself, you can work as an agile project manager and make a good amount of funds um, on the average compared to what is obtainable in that environment. I, I want you to know that it would improve the way you view life. And then ultimately, as you keep going through that iterative cycle, like you're seeing on the screen, 
you would keep producing products for customers to review, for business to review. When business reviews it, test it again, and that's where we call, that's what we call user acceptance testing uh, state. Allow them to test it, and then you can ship a potentially viable product uh, to the market. I, I know I've said so many things, but one most important thing as I'm wrapping up now and I'm opening to question is, you need to build a culture, a culture of being agile thinking. It must be a culture that values customer. It must be a culture that respects people. It must be a culture that is open to continuous learning and capacity building. It must be a culture that is transparent, accountable, and continuously monitor and evaluation. It must be a culture that seeks to eliminate waste and build quality into every process. It must be a culture of continuous collaboration amongst internal and external stakeholders. And ultimately, it must be a culture that is resilient enough, adaptive enough to respond to change, and then to try in a volatile, uncertain, and complex world. Lean Agile is an intentional work. You cannot delegate it. So if you love delegation, because leaders must find a way to mentor their team on a fresh path to transformation always. I want to employ you, if you, can, if you have time, and resources to read the book, Transforming the Impossible. You will learn about incorporating the nine needed agile quality minds for leading sustainable improvement, innovations, and transformation. At this point, I will be open to questions. Um, if you have any question, do we have someone at the uh, tracking? If you have any question, you can put it in the chat. I want to open to questions. So if you have questions, anything you probably think I didn't explain well, or you just picked, or you've learned about before, or you just want us to rub minds together, you want me to learn from you, or you want to learn from little experience. If you have questions, please let's let's share. I can see some great minds on the call. Thank you so much for joining. Um I see my cyber security expert on the call. Mr. Adeyemi Bisayo, do you have any questions for us, please? Thank you for joining. And by the way, where uh, my seat was beside the seat where we're in uh, junior secondary school. Fantastic guy. Do we have any question in the chat? We're, we're matching in on the how. I don't want to be sure we have questions. Do we have any? Okay, I think there's a chat. Do we have any question? You know when they say going, going. Questions from anyone, please. Um, let's let's. Or maybe you have something that is so not clear experientially or something. Let's learn from your experience. Let other folks learn from your experience. All right, in the absence of any question, then let me just take the last um, minute to talk about, let me just take two minutes to talk about um, the Scrum Theory. It's founded on lean thinking and empiricism. Of course, I've spoken a lot about lean thinking. I probably don't need to. But empiricism is a concept that holds that the knowledge comes through experience and observation-based decision-making. You see, you can underestimate or underemphasize the power of learning through experience and strength of observation. So just like in the game of martial arts, in most of the martial arts, you see they enroll a young boy who comes in every day to start learning under a mentor, under a leader. 
So just like that in Scrum, in anywhere you are, you might currently be in the learning phase. So don't feel bad when you're under pressure and you have to learn. And let me also warn you, if you pivot from, I've, I've done some pivoting in career. If you move from medicine to maybe project management, you, are, you may be a leader in medicine, but by the time you join project management, you're now starting afresh. You're now a child. So you have to start learning again the heart of project management. You may be able to draw from some of the wealth of experiences you had in your previous role. But even at that, you're still the child in the new one. If you pivot to from project management to something else, you will still be a child in the new thing. If you pivot to politics, you'll be a child of politics and start learning. You may leverage on some relationships, some experience, but you'll still be a child. So like the learning in martial art, there's something called shuhari. Shuhari. Because the whole idea is that you will first learn under a system. When you learn to a point, you start developing your own philosophy gradually as you're becoming a leader gradually. And ultimately, you will translate into re where you will now be able to, you, of course, at re level, you are now a leader. So you can now redefine a philosophy that aligns with all the things you're learning. But the whole idea is you must learn first. I think Shu is SHU or something. So you would, you would, have to learn. So in life, anywhere you are, understand that you must be learning something. And it would enable you to be able to start developing coherent philosophy on how you want to live your life, how you want to lead or solve problems, and how you want to build community of people to keep solving problems at scale, and how you want to build army of people who will be able to deal with issues resist evil when they come. Because as a, as a lean agile thinker, you must think like a mother who wants to birth an idea, but you must always also think as a father who must protect the idea with his life. So you must fight like a father. You must learn to build strength like a father. America is one of the most innovative country, very welcoming, loving, but ultimately too, it's one of the most militarized country in the world. So don't be a child. Only children think that love is the only thing. In love, there's also the discipline of protecting what you're loving. And if you have to protect what you love, you would have to put them under some pressure, under some discipline, under some regulations, and under some restrictions. Thank you so much for joining me. If we still do not have any questions at this point, I think we can call it a great meeting, right? I want to appreciate everyone for joining. Thank you so much. Uh, you can just use different emojis to express your emotional expression. And I want to appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. I'm st stopping right away. You can pause the recording. Um, who is with the system? Please stop the recording.